uh, George Meyer, and I'm currently executive director of the Wisconsin Wildlife Federation. But I'd like to thank the Great Lakes Indian Fish and Wildlife Commission for this invitation. As Jim Zorn can verify when he called, I think it took, took, it took about 10 to 15 seconds uh, to say yes, I would be here, I could be here today, and really wanted to take part of this uh, in this celebration. Before I get on to the topic, I just want to pick up on the point of George, what George Nwago talked about in the last panel. And he talked about the heroes that Fred and Mike Tribble were. And that clearly uh, is the case in terms of setting the way for the reaffirmation of the uh, treaty rights of the Ojibwe uh, people. But there were some, before I go next up, what is really great to see here, besides the large turnout and many old friends and, and colleagues of this era, are the many young people in this room. I mean, this is 25 years ago the, uh, of the Voight decision. There's a lot of people here that are less than 30, which, you know, if you were five years old, you probably didn't remember those details. And this is an important history and legacy uh, for all of you. And besides the heroes, tribbles, those first people that exercised, especially their uh, spearfishing rights on the lakes of northern Wisconsin, are truly heroes. I was on those boat landings because of my responsibility as head of uh, law enforcement for DNR and provide, I'm not a credential officer, but there are credential officers and responsibility for overseeing them on a general basis and also to provide them assistance. And they should get credit for all the work that they did to try to keep the peace, especially on the water. That's where the DNR wardens had the responsibility. But I saw those boat landings, and it was a dangerous situation for, for someone to be spirit fish. And some nights were calm, and we all bless those nights, but there are many nights where it was not calm. And I see my good friend, Tom Olson, in the back of the room. And his leadership and the other tribal leaders uh, that provide that leadership are true heroes. Talking about the Great Lakes Indian Fish and Wildlife Commission, uh, I was at my desk on January 25th, 1983, 1983, and I received a phone call. I was the first one in the DNR to receive the phone call from Assistant Attorney General Mary Bowman, who had handled the state side of the appeal of one of the lawyers handling the state side of the appeal of the Voight case. And she told me about this. Now, I hadn't heard about the Voight case. I was a lawyer at DNR, but this was a case that the Attorney General's office was handling. And there were virtually nobody in the top management of DNR. By then, it was two secretaries after Lester Voight. And virtually none of the lawyers had any background. And uh, Mary explained the decision and that the state had lost, and here, here's what it said. Now, nobody could say what it meant in total, because it took us eight years to totally figure that out through much additional uh, work with the courts and through negotiations. But I knew it was a life-changing moment. And it was a life-changing moment for everyone in this room. 